the Aegis Experiment at CERN, the European Laboratory for Particle Physics, are investigating the properties of antimatter in order to address the fundamental question about the universe. Why does it not contain equal amounts of matter and antimatter, as would be expected? The experiment that we're carrying out needs to form antimatter, so we use CERN's particle accelerators for that, but also detect it with sensitivity. For that, we use photographic plates, together with the fact that when antimatter meets matter, they annihilate each other in a tiny fireball, out of which new particles and antiparticles come flying. When these fly through the photographic plates, they expose the silver bromide along their trajectory. When the film of the photographic plates is developed, these trajectories can thus be seen as very thin lines. By scanning the photographic plate under a microscope and focusing progressively deeper into the photographic emulsion, deeper and deeper layers become visible so that we and the involved public can see the trajectories in their full three-dimensional glory, determine how much energy the fragments lost, this is the darkness of the line, and how far into the photographic plate the fragments flew before coming to a stop or leaving the plate. How the fireball behaves is poorly understood, and furthermore depends on the type of matter that the antimatter meets. The outcome is not the same in the case of beryllium or lead, and our public science project wants to systematically explore this by annihilating antimatter, specifically antiprotons, in thin films placed directly on the surface of the photographic plates. Thin because we want the particles and nuclear fragments coming out of the fireball to be able to reach the photographic plates and be detected there. We rely on the human capacity to detect patterns even from flimsy signals to tell us how many particles and how many fragments are produced for each type of thin film, be it beryllium, lead, silver, aluminum, silicon, gold. The resulting knowledge will help produce a deeper understanding of the annihilation process itself, but also tests models of the nucleus in a novel manner. The project started at a web fest last year, with half a dozen volunteers putting together a prototype proof of principle, and is now ready, thanks to funding from the EU, to take the next step, the beta release. Rather than select a handful of volunteers from the general public, we have decided instead to focus on two dozen high schools around the world in which science teachers and their classes will be involved in telling us what to improve, asking us questions about physics, and hopefully coming up with suggestions for things that we have not thought of but might be able to test in the coming months. This project, by building on the fascination with the concept of antimatter, will thus hopefully allow science teachers in different countries around the world to propose a direct link to active research to their class and can hopefully be extended to include many other areas in which the Aegis experiment is involved, all of them at the forefront of physics. Quantum optics, nanostructured materials, material science, ultra-thin membranes. These are all rather abstract areas of research, but they can be given a human face by involving the graduate students and researchers working Managing the interaction between the high school teachers and students on one hand, and the researchers on the other, requires a community manager who, thanks again to the same EU funding, has started guiding, as well as following, our attempts to make this project a useful platform for science, but, perhaps even more importantly, for attracting and involving the next generation to science and technology.